The phone rang. It was 3 a.m. John jolted awake, heart pounding. Who would call at this hour? He fumbled for the phone, his hand shaking. Hello? He croaked, his voice thick with sleep. Silence. Only the faint hum of the line answered him. Hello, who is this? He repeated, his voice sharper this time. Still, there was no answer. John hung up, placing the phone back on the nightstand. He lay awake, staring into the darkness, a knot of fear growing in his stomach. The next day, John tried to brush off the incident. He was probably just stressed, he reasoned. But as night fell, the memory of the phone call returned sharper than ever. He found himself checking the phone every few minutes, dreading yet anticipating another call. Sleep was a distant memory now. He lay in bed listening intently to the sounds of the house settling around him. The following night, the phone rang again. 3 a.m., John's blood ran cold. He stared at the phone, his heart pounding against his ribs. He couldn't bring himself to answer it. The ringing stopped. John exhaled, relief washing over him, but it was short-lived. A moment later, the phone rang again and again. John couldn't take it anymore. Who is this? He yelled, his voice raw with fear. The phone calls continued every night, always at 3 a.m. John tried everything, leaving the phone unplugged, taking it off the hook, even calling the phone company. Nothing worked. The calls kept coming. He started hearing things too, whispers in the dead of night, footsteps following him in the empty house. His reflection in the mirror seemed off, his eyes filled with a terror he didn't recognize. He was living in a constant state of fear. John stopped going to work, stopped answering his door. He withdrew from his friends, pushing everyone away. John felt his sanity slipping away. Desperate for answers, he started digging into his past, searching for anything that could explain the terrifying events unfolding around him. A forgotten memory flickered at the edge of his mind. A childhood friend, a tragic accident, a name whispered in hushed tones. Samuel, Samuel, his childhood best friend. They used to play in the old abandoned house at the edge of town, a house with a dark history, a house where, legend had it, a young boy had died under mysterious circumstances. John had tried to block out the memory of what happened that day in the abandoned house. The day Samuel had fallen, his lifeless eyes staring up at John with an accusation that haunted his dreams ever since. Driven by a mixture of fear and morbid curiosity, John decided to return to the abandoned house. He had to know the truth. As he approached the dilapidated structure, a cold wind whipped around him, carrying the whisper of his name. The house loomed before him, its broken windows like empty eyes, watching his every move. John stepped inside. The air was thick with dust and decay. The only light came from the moon shining through the broken windows, casting long, eerie shadows across the room. He could hear the sound of his own breathing, amplified in the silence. And then he saw it, a figure standing in the shadows at the end of the hall. It was a child, his back to John, his head cocked at an unnatural angle. The boy's lips moved, forming words John could hear as clearly as if he was standing right beside him. He wants you to know he wasn't alone, the boy rasped, his voice a chilling whisper that seemed to slither through the air. John's blood ran cold. He wasn't imagining it. He wasn't crazy, this was real. But who was this boy and what did he mean? The boy took a step closer, his eyes boring into John's. He wants you to remember what you did, the boy whispered, his voice closer now, laced with an icy malice that sent shivers down John's spine. He wants you to remember. The others, John stumbled back, fear clutching at his throat. The others? What did he mean, the others?